because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. Pope Francis kicking off the most ambitious trip of his pontificate with Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim-majority country, where his message centered on how different religions can coexist. The Pope stopping by the largest mosque in Southeast Asia. And if God is God for all, then we're all sons and daughters of God. Ma il mio Dio è più importante del tuo. But my God is more important than your God. È vero quello? Is that true? C'è un solo Dio. There's only one God and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to uh, arrive at God. Qualcuno indi, qualcuno cristiano, Indo, Christian, sono diversi cammini. There, there are different paths. Understood? visiting the tunnel of friendship linking it to a nearby cathedral and sharing this sweet moment with the country's grand imam, two leaders practicing what they preach as they called for greater interfaith dialogue. In, regioni, oh. In various regions we see the emergence of violent conflicts, he said, which are often the result of a lack of mutual respect. Uh, a very important moral voice, moral... Professor Chan, in today's volatile world. Uh, Dr. Hedges, uh, perhaps we can bring you into the conversation as well. You know, Pope Francis came with a message of hope and inter-religious harmony has been uh, a key theme throughout his tour. I think it's important to stress that this inter-religious dialogue is not just a feature of the Pope's um, visit here in Southeast Asia. Um, this has been a key part of his work as, as the Pope in, in his role as the leader of sort of um, all the world sort of Catholics. Ever since he's become the Pope, he's wanted to strengthen interreligious relations. Um, and I think we can see in his first stop in Jakarta, um, where he meets um, with very important sort of Imam there in the largest sort of mosque in the region. And of course, on his last day here in Singapore, um, he's engaging with uh, youth from many different sort of communities, not just Catholic, but the Catholic Uni College. So sort of, if you like, interreligious dialogue starts and ends his entire tour. So he is, in fact, a world leader and someone that one should listen to. I was quite struck, for instance, in his January address, I, was, I saw that he said he was concerned with escalating crisis in the world and that he was concerned that World War III seemed to be fought piecemeal with so many conflicts growing. So that started a little bit. We want to peace for the world, especially for the poor. In Timor, the Pope facing pressure to address the clergy sex abuse scandal that has rocked the Catholic Church and calling on leaders to prevent every kind of child abuse, but stopping short of specifically referring to clergy abuse or issuing any apology. Last stop, Singapore, where Catholics are in the minority. The Pope circling back to that message of religious harmony, saying Singapore sets an example for the rest of the world. We want to show you some extraordinary pictures which came to us from the Vatican on what was, of course, an extraordinary day. Within hours of Pope Benedict announcing that he was to resign, take a look at this. Lightning struck St. Peter's Basilica. You can see it again now in slow motion. Extraordinary. It happened just before 6 o'clock in the evening, local time. 